On June 30, the EU and Vietnam signed a historic defense agreement, the first in Southeast Asia. The agreement paves the way for Vietnam's participation in European military missions, peacekeeping operations and tighter defense cooperation, and comes as Europe extends its strategic ambition to East Asia, just when China is challenging the existing order. Though European powers are keen on maintaining robust and fruitful relations with Beijing, they have rightly shown their willingness to uphold a rules-based order in the region. In recent years, the UK and France have stepped up their naval presence in China's adjacent waters, while the EU and its key members have fortified economic and strategic relations with smaller Southeast Asian states. There are reasons for European to get involved in East Asia. It is consistent with the EU's principles and strategic doctrine. While it has remained neutral about territorial and maritime spats in the South China Sea, its 2016 global strategy calls on member states to uphold freedom of navigation, respect the law of the sea and encourage the peaceful settlement of maritime disputes. Moreover, its 2014 maritime security strategy expects EU members' armed forces to play a strategic role at sea and from the sea, undertaking the full spectrum of maritime responsibilities, this includes, crucially, supporting freedom of navigation in international waters and deterring illicit activities. Given its additional commitment to maintaining maritime security in the South China Sea, it certainly seems that China's relentless militarization of the disputes poses a direct threat to these basic values. The EU has already signed similar defense deals with key US allies such as Australia, which have also raised concerns over Chinese assertiveness in their neighborhood. Both powers, however, have signaled their deep commitment to uphold freedom of navigation and overflight in China's maritime backyard. In fact, the UK has announced its intention to deploy the Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier to the South China Sea, while working with France on joint maritime exercises and enhancing the ability to operate together in military situations with Japan, India and Australia across the Indo-Pacific. The greater European contribution to peace and stability in the region makes it clear that rising tensions in East Asia are not being left to a cynical Sino-American superpower rivalry. Instead, we are witnessing multilateral efforts among like-minded powers to protect international public goods and constrain China's maritime ambitions. Europe should become a bigger part of this collective movement to preserve a rules-based order in Asia.